Hi friends, let's talk about IVF protocols. I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford and I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I talk about fertility and IVF every single day and I am going to do a very quick high yield video on IVF and what I want you to know about the protocol specifically. These are questions that are probably the top questions that I get asked in my Facebook group, on my podcast, on YouTube, on Instagram as protocol based questions. So I want to break them down for you. If you're new here, I am so glad that you're here. I know we saw a huge bump in subscribers after the Huberman podcast, which was such a whirlwind experience, but it was wonderful. So if you're here, this channel exists to educate you about your body. We're going to talk about hormones, periods, fertility, IVF, what you need to know no matter what stage of life that you're at, because we deserve to know how our bodies work and how they function. You can subscribe and I'd love it if you'd stick around. I also have an Instagram, Natalie Crawford MD, and I host the As a Woman podcast channel. IVF is when we try to get one month's group of eggs all to grow, and that's a very important concept to understand from the beginning. The way I like to think about it is that you have your ovary, and inside your ovary is a group of eggs, and you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have. From the very beginning, each month you have a group of eggs coming out of that vault. And what's very important is the size of the group is proportional to how many eggs are inside, meaning, when you have more eggs inside the vault, more come out every month. And when you have fewer eggs inside the vault, fewer come out every month. And you're losing eggs all the time. Before you start your periods, when you're on birth control, when you're pregnant, it doesn't matter. But when we're trying to do IVF, we're trying to get that entire group of eggs to grow forward. Everybody's going to have a different response and that's very important. Also, we wanna understand what we expect you to have. And this is what your ovarian reserve is measuring. Ovarian reserve is checking the eggs that are outside the vault to try to determine how many that you have. And this is done both with a blood test called AMH and with an ultrasound where we can measure the follicles outside the vault. And that's called your AFC or your antral follicle count. Importantly, these can both be influenced by certain factors, notably if you've not ovulated in a long time because of suppression. So if you've been pregnant, breastfeeding, or on hormonal contraceptive, these numbers potentially could be lower than they really are. Not that you're out of eggs, just they're being suppressed. And when more time has passed, those things will improve. Just important facts to note. But everybody's gonna run out of eggs at some point. Start with the most you're ever gonna have, you will run out, that's called menopause. We are trying to see where you are on the spectrum, and that's important because we might intervene more aggressively or do things different if you have a lower egg count. Importantly, lower egg counts are not associated with infertility, meaning, your body doesn't care if you've got five or 20 eggs outside the vault. Your body is made that in natural fertility cycles, you're gonna ovulate one. However, what is important and what does matter is that the fewer eggs you have, the less time you have to grow your family, and the higher risk of having a cycle canceled with IVF, the more cycles you're gonna to need to get to the same outcome because you can only get the eggs that are outside the vault to grow with IVF. IVF success is totally determined by how old you are and how many eggs you have. And the more, the merrier, especially at a younger age. So when you're coming in to do IVF, what I'm trying to evaluate is how many eggs do you have? And think about your entire infertility picture. What is bringing you here? Do you have PCOS? Do you have endometriosis? Do you have other autoimmune disease? And those details are important when I'm trying to pick your protocol. Now the protocol is the combination of medications that we are going to use to try to get all of the eggs to grow. And I will be very honest with you that there are clinics out there that will use the same protocol for every patient, no matter what. And even if you use this protocol and you didn't respond well, they'll use the same protocol again. So you have to be an advocate for your own health. And I'm sorry to tell you that, but especially with something so high stakes as IVF, this is your fertility. It's time consuming, it's expensive, you have a limited amount of time to get the job done. You've gotta know what you're looking for. You've gotta know how to judge or gauge if things are going as expected. And an important caveat, we base your first cycle based on this data, how old you are and your AMH and your medical problems. And then we put you through the cycle. And if you don't respond like we want, or if you're falling below average, 
that's okay because everybody is not going to respond as they should on textbook. But what we do about it, if you don't respond, now that's what's important. Meaning I should be able or you should be able to go to the doctor and they should see your data and say, here are the changes we're going to make. One, two, three, four. And if they say there's no changes, this is exactly like I expected. It didn't get the outcome we wanted, but this is very much within the realm of possibility. That That's okay too. And I'll, and I'll get to that. But what I hate seeing is that somebody just does the same protocol over and over. They're underperforming and nobody's personalizing it, thinking about it, explaining it to them. And they're really just getting substandard care. I'm in physician IVF groups and I'm telling y'all, even doctors who are going to see fertility doctors have the exact same experience that you do. All right, so my goal of the protocol is to get the eggs that are outside the vault to grow. When you're younger, you have more. So an average 30 year old might have 18 to 20. An average 35 year old might have 14 to 15. An average 40 year old might have eight to 10. Those are the number of eggs outside the vault. Now, everybody's on a different pathway, so that's average. So right away, you, you should have an antral follicle count in AMH, and I should know where you are. When I look at the protocol, my goal is to try to get all those eggs to grow. Now, there's different amount every month. The body's not perfect. So there can be up to a 30% swing. So if you come in, I count 18, and then you get 16, totally normal, right? You come in, I count 10, I only get seven, also very normal. So those aren't huge discrepancies. But what I don't like to see is a huge range of immature eggs and no changes in the protocol or a largely discrepant egg count in what we expect. Basic protocol types. The very standard, the safest, the like protocol, if a clinic is going to do one, it's going to be what's called an antagonist. An antagonist protocol can either lead in with a suppression, such as birth control pills or estrogen, or nothing. You just come in off your period. You're then going to come in with a stimulation, and the stimulation is going to be FSH, primarily. There can be some FSH-LH combination that's called Menopure. Fun fact that's made from the purified urine of menopausal women, FSH alone is recombinant FSH, that's synthetic FSH like Conal or Follistum. But these medications are going to mimic what the brain does. So the brain normally sends out FSH to get one egg to grow, and we're going to take more than that to try to get all of the eggs to grow. Okay, that usually takes about 10 to 14 days, and you're going to come in for monitoring with estrogen and ultrasound to see how the eggs are growing. Typically, you expect estrogen levels of around 150 to 200 picograms per mature egg in an IVF cycle, and we're adjusting medications along the way. Now, the mature range of eggs for the average person is going to be about 15 to 20 millimeters. So that's important. What's your estrogen? What's your egg range? You can trigger somebody in an antagonist cycle with either Lupron or HCG because they bind to the same receptor can't use Lupron in somebody who has FHA or functional hypothalamic amenorrhea because it requires the brain to work. Essentially what it does is it flares the brain to send out a lot of natural LH and that is the surge versus giving you HCG which just binds to the LH receptor. The reason why we like to give Lupron is that I can push you further, get more eggs, get your estrogen higher and decrease the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation which is something that is created or caused when you have a high number of eggs and a high estrogen. And I have a whole video on it. OHSS is real. It's something to be scared of, but it happens so much more rare now. And specifically, if you're doing a loop on trigger, we really don't have to worry about it. So I hate seeing people who are being triggered really early, but they're getting a loop on trigger, especially when they need to be pushed a little bit further. One problem I also see with antagonist cycles, especially when used in people who have a lower ovarian reserve or who are older is a lot of discrepancy in their cohort, meaning they have follicles ranging from 10 millimeters to 24 millimeters, just all over the place. And a lot of synchronization issues just based on the nature of the protocol. If you have a really high egg count, that probably matters less. We don't need 50 eggs. But if you don't have as many, every egg matters more. Sometimes you can get that synchronicity improved by leading them with suppression like estrogen or the birth control pill. And the reason why is that estrogen stops the brain from sending out FSH. Therefore, those follicles that come out of the vault don't see any FSH and then they're hungrier. So they respond and grow together better. I use the bad analogy if we can imagine. Normally you've got a nest of baby birds. Mama bird brings one worm. The biggest bird's gonna get the worm and grow and that's what happens normally. We're trying to override that process when we do IVF. So if I starve all the birds for a little bit of time and don't feed them, and then I come in with a tray of worms for all the birds, 
Now all the birds can grow together and they're going to be happy and they're all going to get big and fat. That's what IVF is. So that's what we're trying to do, but I like to starve the birds first and get a better response in most people. Otherwise, you have some Lupron protocols. Lupron protocol can be used as a suppressant, and that can either be used in the luteal phase or overlapping with birth control pills. It can be continued through the stimulation or it can be halted or stopped because Lupron lasts as a suppressant for up to 12 days. Lupron's giving subcutaneously, and it is what we call a GnRH agonist. GnRH is secreted from the hypothalamus and it controls the release of FSH and LH from the pituitary gland. If I give an agonist, what it actually does is upregulates all of your FSH and LH, but then the pituitary gland's empty and it has none and you're down regulated. That's why you have to start it in the luteal phase or on birth control pills when there is no FSH or LH in the pituitary to send out. This suppressant is called the long protocol. I'm a big fan, especially if you have a lower egg count, suppress everything first, then come in and grow it with your FSH and LH. I find that you get a lot more synchronous cohort for a lot of patients, okay? Nuances if you're not getting what you want can be changing if you overlapped with birth control or trying a luteal start of it, seeing if you should stop it or continue it through the protocol. So there's some nuance within, but that's a Lupron suppression. Lupron can also be used as a flare. So that means you come in and you use Lupron right at the beginning when you're not suppressed to try to get that pituitary release of FSH and LH. And then you're coming in with your gonadotropins and then you're still having to use an antagonist on the back end. Similarly, I don't really see the pituitary gland has high enough of FSH or LH. I see you're not really maximizing synchronicity or, or or getting the peak follicle number, even if you have low ovarian reserve. So to me, this is a, like a men's stem protocol. Like you're not gonna have many eggs. I almost never use it. Some people, it's their favorite protocol if your AMH is less than one. It's just not mine. You're also gonna see minimal stimulation protocols if you're only gonna get five or fewer eggs. And this can be where you might use Clomid in addition to FSH. Maybe you don't use high enough or as high doses. You also might see it where you're leading in with estrogen, birth control, or even an ovulation blocker. So a lot of different things to try to drop that FSH down because your body's FSH is higher and then come in with only enough FSH because if you only have four eggs, you don't need all the FSH in the world. You only need FSH to grow four. Similarly though, those are also antagonist cycles because we've got to prevent you from ovulating once those eggs are growing. So you've got to stop yourself from ovulating, you gotta grow the eggs. And those are kind of the basic protocols that really exist. There's nuances amongst them, but you have suppressants and stimulants and understanding what you're looking for. So if you have a group of eggs that's your cohort and you're not getting close to that at all, or you go and you get 20 eggs, only eight are mature, you need to be having a WTF appointment with your doctor to try to figure out what changes can we make to do better? Because you probably can. And if your doctor doesn't want to change anything, that's a big red flag. Now, just because you get the number of eggs expected, that's the protocol's job. That doesn't mean you're going to make normal embryos. It doesn't mean you're going to get pregnant, right? You've got to look at it one step at a time because not every egg is going to fertilize or going to make it through culture or going to be normal. And not every normal embryo is going to form a baby. So this is just step one. This is the part that's most easily controlled by your IVF doctor and most easily manipulated. So you want to maximize the number of mature eggs and that's what the protocol can and can't do. All right, ask your IVF questions below so we can get to those. I would love to answer them in an upcoming Q&A. You can also find more information if you look at the IVF playlist here on the As Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.